going into the room of his sleeping daughters, 18-year-old Rebecca, 14-year-old Anne, 12-year-old Sarah and 9-year-old Georgiana, he slit their throats with a carving knife and left them to bleed out in their beds. Hello and welcome back, I hope you're doing well. In today's video we're talking about a hard-working, nice man who one day slit the throats of all of his daughters while they slept. This is the case of Peter Shoebridge. On the morning of Sunday the 26th of June 1997, emergency services in Tasmania received a phone call from a house nine miles north of Hobart. It was to report a murder-suicide at the house that the call had came from. When police and ambulance crews arrived at the address, they found a man's body lying near the entrance to a shed in the back garden. A gunshot wound through his head and his right hand chopped off and sitting on a chopping block next to the rest of the body and the axe that had been used to cut it off. The dead man was 52-year-old Peter Shoebridge, described by one of his neighbours as a hard-working bloke who didn't smoke or drink. Peter was the son of a wealthy farming family and lived a genteel life in Southernfield in a mansion shaded by gum trees and grapevines on an idyllic country estate north of Hobart. He spent his time restoring antiques and writing poetry, some of which had been published. His 1992 book of poetry, A Bush Wedding, was dedicated to his ever caring and supportive wife and four beautiful daughters who provide all the beauty a human could it possibly ever wish to have. But in the early hours of that morning in late June, Peter did something that no one who knew him ever imagined he would be capable of. Going into the room of his sleeping daughters, 18-year-old Rebecca, 14-year-old Anne, 12-year-old Sarah and 9-year-old Georgiana, he slit their throats with a carving knife and left them to bleed out in their beds. Rebecca woke up in time to make a failed attempt at defending herself, sustaining defensive wounds to her hands in the process, but the younger three never even had a chance. After murdering his daughters, Peter drove to the nearest town, Cambridge, and posted letters explaining what he'd done to relatives. Some of the envelopes stained with the girl's blood. He then returned home and made the call to the emergency services before going out to his workshop in the shed, retrieving an axe and chopping his right hand off. Why he cut his hand off is the subject of some debate. Some believe that he felt guilt regarding the murder of his daughters and so cut off the hand that he'd used to do the deed as a some sort of self-inflicted punishment or atonement. Others think that as an untreated amputation of that nature would likely result in fatal blood loss with a fairly short space of time, it was a backup way of killing himself if what he did next didn't do the job. Whatever the reason for the self-inflicted amputation, once he'd done that, he picked up a 22 calibre rifle and presumably with some difficulty as he was missing a hand, shot himself in the head. Why Peter Shoebridge did what he did remains something of a mystery. He had no history of violence or mental health problems and while the police were quick to attribute the death to his recent separation from his wife Wendy, who retained custody of the girls, there doesn't appear to have been any significant animosity between the former couple. The day before the murders, Wendy had dropped her daughters off at the father's house and later said that Peter had been normal and ordinary. The letter sent to relatives after the murders, along with more letters found neatly stacked on the kitchen table, offer some clue as to the motive. According to the local coroner at the time, Ian Matterson, the letters were long and detailed, speaking of his concern for this troubled world and how he didn't want his girls to continue living in it, along with mentioning his animals and how they should be cared for after he was gone. Mr. Matterson also said that Peter Shoebridge had some concerns about his own future. He had apparently been told by his general practitioner about 12 months before that his degenerative arthritis, mainly in his lumbar spine, could mean that within several years he may have had difficulty walking. But his young daughters had everything to live for. 
In hindsight, there is some indication that Peter's mental state worsened significantly after the mass shooting in Port Arthur, Tasmania on the 28th of April 1996, in which 35 people were killed and 23 others were wounded by a lone gunman who went on a shooting spree at the popular Port Arthur historic site. Shortly before committing the murders, Peter had written, Would it be right to bring children up in such a world? But aside from that, he gave no indication of how seriously troubled he was. As far as the outside world knew, he was normal, stable, albeit a slightly eccentric man. To further confuse the issue, there is evidence that he originally only intended to kill himself, since among the letters on the kitchen table were ones addressed to the girls that included instructions on life. In the words of the coroner, whether taking the lives was seen as a way of protecting them from the world as a result of some depression or delusion will remain a speculation. So that was the case of Peter Shoebridge. Quite a puzzling case, but he obviously felt that his daughters were better off out of this world rather than being a part of it. But that wasn't his choice to make. Consider subscribing if you enjoy my videos, but until I see you again, please be safe, be well, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.